All right, all right, all right, loyal listeners. Welcome to another episode of Agents Influence Podcast Conversations with Cass. And here I am in your ear or in your eyes if you're watching us on YouTube or if you're following us out there. Um, today I am with a, a friend. A partner, I guess I should say. It's Jeff Hogue. He is the director of sales and leads a bunch of shit that I don't know um, with Quote Wizard. And uh, Quote Wizard, I know you guys have all heard of Quote Wizard. And we'll talk a little bit more about them. We're going to talk a little bit about, about you know, E&O. Or not E&O. My God, where did E&O come from? What the hell? We're talking about leads. And we're going to talk about new business. And we're going to talk about making money. And we're going to talk to a guy who's talked to over three to 4,000. He said if you had to guess, he said he could put a throw a dart and be accurate at three to 4,000 other agency owners and how to make them successful. And he's been doing it for nine years. And I just want to just get that out there to you guys. But before I do, loyal listeners, I want to break it yeah. down to you for a minute. And Jeff, if you could give me a couple minutes here. Uh, today is December 7th of 2021, and it is 9.13 a.m. So that is December 7th. Boy, uh, wow, just now thinking about it, that's Pearl Harbor Day. That's, that's the geek in me that comes out. Pearl Harbor, and I really haven't even seen anything about that today. But what I um, wanted to ta- tell you is that as of December 3rd, I finished my 75 hard. Now, I know you loyal listeners have been following along with me. Um, Ryan out there, uh, 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 Susan, uh, let's see, who, uh, Troy, Tim, you guys have all been uh, following me. And for loyal listeners, if you don't know, when I announced that I was doing the 75 hard uh, back in August, that I was going to start in September, I didn't know it, but there were people who knew I was starting on September 20th, so they started too. And then slowly, as the 75 days have went on, these people have reached out to me and are like, hey, I'm on day 15 with you. I flew to Oklahoma and ran into Ryan Smith down there. And he's like, hey, man, I just want to let you know. I can't remember what what we were on. We were on like 18, day 20, something like that. And I started telling him, and he's like, I know, I'm on the same I'm on the same day I started with you. And I thought to myself, like, that is so freaking awesome. I'm like, holy cow. So then I mentioned it on my podcast that Ryan had said something to me, and then other people reached out and said, dude, I started it on September 20th when you did, which really was mind-blowing to me. But on December 3rd, um, it was my last 75 day. And I got to tell you, it um, was an unbelievable time. It really, truly was like a grind three or four times. Uh, and when I say that, there was a probably right after about the third or fourth week, it kind of got tough for a week there. And there were certain little things that I did to kind of break the cycle um, and get out of that um, uh, physical, physically looking at yourself and noticing that yourself is changing is a very motivating thing. I will tell you one of these things that I don't um, that that I would I, a, a tip that I would give you is that if you do do something like this, do it in the spring or do it in the fall. Because if you do it in the summer, one of the workouts has to be outside, and one and if you do it in the in the winter, oh my gosh, it's brutal. I thank God mine is just now ending. So 75 hardest for 75 days, I had to do two 45 minute workouts, one in the one inside and one outside. I had to follow a strict diet. Well, it didn't matter what diet it was. I did the Dash diet, D A S H. I thought it was great. Um, I could not have alcohol. I had to take daily pictures of myself. I got to admit, I failed on that every so often. And then I had to drink a gallon of water and I had to read 10 pages of a book a day. Now the book, no problem. I I read more than 10 pages. I mean, regardless, it doesn't even matter. I'm sleeping. I think I read. I read so much that I, what we, what I found out is I also added loyal listeners to it. I added no sugar. Okay. I added no uh, caffeine. So I got rid of coffee. I've been a coffee drinker my entire life. I got rid of that. I got rid of cannabis. Couldn't hang out with the broskies and do a little cannabis every now and then. Jason couldn't do it. So I got rid of that. Um, I grew my nails out. I, for, since I'm 13 years old, I have um, bit and chewed on my nails. No more. I look like a like a supermodel. If you're watching, if you watch in uh, YouTube, this is the benefit of watching it because you get to see my shiny ass nails. Um, and so, I basically, loyal listeners, lived like a monk for 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 75 days. I was a monk pretty much. 
And um, I did some other things. I made myself journal, which I thought was really, really crazy. I've always wanted to do that, and it does. It sucks. I hate it. I, I can't stand it because I've got to – why do you – why do I cannot stand it? Because I don't want to do it in the morning. Because I can't remember what I did the day before, right? So I can't do it in the morning, and I guess I could be inspirational, but I want to kind of like, like get my, like remember things when I'm older and I'm and I'm 80, and I look back and I read this, right? And then, but I, but if you do it at night, then like all the little things that you go through the day, thinking to yourself like, oh, I need to remember to journal that, or oh, I need to remember, to, you don't remember that shit. So here it is in the evening, and you're sitting there going, okay, yeah, I worked out at this time, and this is where I went, and then in the evening, I worked out here. And you're, like, almost having to invent shit. I guess, I think it's one of those things, dude, you got to, like, like um, train your brain on. But journaling sucks. I tell you, that, that was the part that I hated out of all of it. But I did it every day. I put something in the journal every damn day. Because I was living like a monk and didn't have anything else to do. But my starting weight was 176 pounds. I got down to as low as 153. And right now I'm at 156. People would think, what in the hell, Jason? You were already skinny. That's where I told people for a long time. I said, I know I look skinny, but I look at myself in the mirror after I get out of the shower. And I don't look like I did when I was 25. Not that I'm supposed to look like that when I'm 25. I'm just saying, you know. So any of you guys thinking to yourself out there, you're like, oh, I've looked at myself. i got a little belly. It's kind of okay. No, you're probably fat. That's just the way it is. And I, I found that out personally myself. Because now I look at myself and I really still have about, I still only at like 13, 14% body fat. Which, yes, is low. But to be really in shape, you need to be at about 10 to 11 to 12%. Which means I need to lose more weight. But I need to pound, pack on some um, some muscle as well. So it was in a journey. I'm going to tell you it was tough. Thanksgiving was the week before I had to end. And I always get with all my family and we have all kinds of fun. And uh, I had to just kind of sit there. I drank like two gallons of water because as they were drinking, I was drinking my water. And I'm just like down in water. Um, it was a really, 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 really good time. It's something that I will do again. I am doing my best to sustain it. I'll work out once a day for the rest of my life. That's easy. But I want to try and throw in those two a days. Those through those two a days really uh, those um, those really test you. And the biggest thing I learned before I get on with this is I learned that the um, time management is the most important thing that you can possibly have. And the reason why I say that is, is because I couldn't do it without it. I mean, I could not absolutely do without it. I just, I just really, truly couldn't. So, so when you have to wake up in the morning and you have to look at the weather first thing every day to try and figure out like, okay, if it's going to be rain in the afternoon, I need to run, I need to do my outside in the, in the morning, right? Or I'm going to do morning and vice versa. You have to check that out. You'll realize that time management's everything, and the last thing you'll realize is that the weatherman is wrong a shitload of the time. And when he tells you it's going to rain, it's probably not, so you can't guess on, go on what he says. You just got to live in the now and just do it. So that was me, and I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a wrap. I thought about doing a whole podcast on it, but I thought, eh, I'll just do it right as one of the openings. And so there it is. So, so anyways, loyal listeners... I'm telling you, you got to try it. If you're trying to get outside of your comfort zone, don't do it in the winter. I'd wait until the spring. But that's me in 75 hard. I accomplished it. And I realize now that I can do a lot more than I ever thought that I could do. So that's for you. Opening up this show right, I'm Jeff Hogue. Well. How well. are yeah, you from Quote Wizard, brother? like uh, quite the journey there. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was, man. It was. And it was a fun journey. It really, truly was a fun journey. I had a good time doing it. But uh, it's over now, and I think I am going to do it again. I probably, mm-hmm. I probably do even like little thirty days. <laughs> Don't try to cheat, loyal listeners. You got to do the seventy-five day, and then you can do the thirty days if you want. Like you know, if I'm getting ready to go on to, um, uh, let's say some, if I want to go, I'm going to the beach, and I want to look good, really good, because I saw how. When you do follow a strict diet, drink a gallon of water a day, and work two times a day, mm-hmm. in 30 days, you can transform your body. You, in 30 days, you really can transform your body. So I'm it's doing pretty well, cool. Doing Anyways, well. enough Glad of that. To be here. Jeff, Thank how are you doing, me. brother? 
and I'm glad to have you. We're going to sit here and we're going to talk a little bit about these leads. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about about life, and we're going to talk about <laughs> love. I just said love just because it was another L word. We're really yes, not going to talk absolutely. about that. So, Jeff, are you ready? Uh, I'm an iPhone user. Are you an iPhone? Are you a Droid user? Yeah, yeah. Wah, wah, oh man wah. what's the last um, app that you downloaded there's a new hockey team in seattle called the kraken and uh i went ahead and sprang for season tickets so they have the their own app and you know keep up with the team manage my tickets it's pretty cool uh yeah i grew up in the dallas You're a big area, hockey guy um, and the dallas stars were really big down there then i moved up to the pacific northwest and we didn't have any hockey teams which was really weird because you'd think like uh, hey, the middle of Texas is more hockey really based than up here, but now we do, so it's pretty fun. Yeah. Yes, yep. Is it an NHL uh, team? This season, it's their first season, so when does they it start? built a new arena, and yeah, they're rocking, man. Well, actually, so, no, they're not very good. <laughs> the days when I used to know this shit, and now it's like Jeff. I just don't wreck. I oh, can't. The Kraken, yeah. All right, wow, and they're called the Kraken. Uh, I mean, where did that like come from? What does squid? that have to do so with? So I think like the whole nautical Seattle, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Kraken. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. You just got to know what a kraken is. And if you live in, if you live in the uh, in America's kitchen, the heartland <laughs> of America, like I do, I have no idea what that is. But anyways, okay. Uh, that's all right. So Jeff, oh, um, I love winning. Do you love to that's win or do you hate to lose? Oh, here. Yeah. That's your big yeah, thing? Yeah, um, so, you Always know, been that way. Uh, we were talking a little bit earlier, but um, the cool thing I think about my family is uh, my dad was a salesperson. My grandpa was a salesperson. Uh, I think I tried not to be a salesperson, and uh, I wasn't very good at that. So, uh, lo and behold, here I am. And um, and I think part of why I love to win is uh, I love when other people win. I love when I win, and um, it's just a lot more fun. That's the answer. I love it when other people other uh, win. And when you're in a leadership position and people are under mm -hmm. you and they're winning, that means it's a good day. I'm with you there, brother. Skill or luck? To what you, would you say has been a bigger Man, factor in your life? You always to have to be in the right are, position, Jeff. but I would say I've been incredibly lucky and blessed. So, yeah. Have you? Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it too. I love it. You and I have uh, very similar. That's how I would have answered all those <laughs> questions, except for I would have said droid. Yeah. So that means that that means I'm a little cooler. All right. So, anyways, uh, Jeff, um, take us back two or three minutes. High school, college, diapers. Oh, Bring us um, forward to who okay, you are now. So Where moved around there? a lot as a kid. My dad was in uh, semiconductor sales, um, which I feel like uh, brought a pretty strong background of being able to adapt to new things. Um, Ended up in the Pacific Northwest just as it was booming. I feel like that's where that's why I would say luck is a big thing in my success here. Um, and then ended up in the Seattle area when um, when I graduated college. So um, ended up in Seattle and found a really cool startup called Quote Wizard and found them on Reddit of all places. That's how I found my job. Yeah, and uh, you know they they advertise wow, themselves cool. truly as a startup. Hey, we have ping pong tables and beer, and uh, sounded really appealing for a 22 year old, you know. So uh, best decision of my life again, just one of those luck things. Um, and uh, started in, on the sales team there, and now I'm now I'm leading that entire sales team, and it's really exciting. And uh, we've grown, we got bought. Um, I've had a kid. You know, I'm married, I have a house, everything's just going right, so. Right. Yeah. That's one good, kid, dude. yep. That's He's uh, going to turn you have one two kid or in two? February here. <laughs> woo, woo, she busy. Yeah, busy, probably. Busy, She's busy. in nursing and school right now, so uh, if you want to talk about busy, that's that's her right now, so <laughs> probably wait till things settle down a bit. Yeah. Yes. My mother was a nurse, and she went mm -hmm. through nursing school when she was in her mid-30s after my dad uh, left us, asshole. No, he's <laughs> my dad now. It's, that's an inside joke between my dad and I. Um, but after they split up, uh, she put herself through nursing school. So I know mm -hmm. that is a, that's a busy time, a lot of commitment, you know, a lot of commitment. Good for her. Good for you, man. Hey, um, so, so, so uh, Jeff, you, uh, Quote Wizard, is a partner mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of Agency Intelligence. Um, and one of the reasons why we decided to use you is you guys reached out to us, um, mm -hmm. when you reached out, and this was probably a year ago 
And then we probably had a little bitty talk for a while, not me and you, but some of the people in your office. And then uh, we kind of faded away. And one reason why I did was, is I wanted to find people who were using you and I wanted to do it organically. I didn't want them to, um, I didn't want you to give me three or four agents mm -hmm. that would be like, oh, call these uh, people, you know. So in the meantime of doing that, I actually had some pretty good experiences when I would hear people say, hey, I'm, I'm getting leads or, uh, yeah, we got a company that's doing call transfers or we got a company doing this and that. And, and every once in a while, the company that would come out is Quote Wizard. And I, hey, whoa, hey, how are you liking them? And I got to be honest with you, some of these places, now I don't say these places when I say internet lead mm -hmm. providers. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not downing them. Because you have to have a system. You got to have a system in place to be able to take the influx of lead and deal with the type of client that's coming in. Whether it's good, bad, or whatever whatever filter you've, you've chosen. But when some of these agencies who are agencies I admire and, and respect were coming back with good things, I remember telling Sarah, who works in our office here at Agency, Agency Intelligence, I said that when they call back, we really actually want to talk to these guys because they could possibly be somebody that was his partner. So you don't know that. Quote Wizard doesn't know that. But that's the kind of behind-the-scenes uh, recon work I try to do when people like yourself. Because a lot of times uh, vendors mm -hmm. will reach out and they want to make it seem like they're the greatest. And then we get become partners with them and we find out that they're not very good people. So... What I wanted to do is inspect you or, and investigate you guys, and you guys came through with uh, fry, flying colors. Why don't you tell me a little bit about from where they're a startup to now you're not a startup yeah. anymore. You've been bought and you're yeah, kind so, of a bigger um, piece. LendingTree.com bought us in 2018, so it's been about three years now. Um, huge value add. I mean, like, let's, let's be real. Um, most people hadn't heard of Quote Wizard before. <laughs> Maybe if you're an insurance agent. Um, yeah. Most people have heard of LendingTree. They had... Um, they had TV commercials. Um, there's actually a, a co I don't know if there's any college football fans out there, but Lending Tree puts on a bowl game in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, that'll be coming at you next Saturday. Um, so, well, uh, next Saturday is the 19th, I believe. So, it, Quote Wizard it's is the, the Lending is Tree the Bowl. So. Bowl sponsor? Yeah. Oh, it's the Lending Tree Bowl. <laughs> no, yes, no, okay, no, gotcha. But, I was um, like, damn, we don't Quote special. Wizard up there? Big dog in it. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Maybe um, one day, right? is a great one partner because, um, uh -huh. you know, they, they're all about getting your financial house in order. And insurance is part of that. Let's be real. If somebody's going to go refinance their mortgage, it's probably time to, to look around for a, a home insurance rate, too. And if you're doing that, well, uh, that's, where, that's where all the valued listeners come in. That's when you start talking about, hey, do you have life insurance? Because if you own a home, you probably should. Um, let's check your auto rates. Do you have any, any toys mm -hmm. to, uh, to insure? Um, so it's just, it, it made sense to be part of that bigger brand and it's really helped us. Um, being a public company comes with, um, comes with a lot of other things. Um, but I would say it's been overwhelmingly positive. Okay. That's great. And so, Mm -hmm. You started out there basically in sales. Uh, my title and you've is worked your way up. What's your title, sales? Jeff? So my team only deals with insurance agents, which I think is great. Uh, <laughs> How big's your team? We've got twenty three right now, so we're <laughs> we're kicking at a good twenty three and um, and. How many leads are you guys uh, That's putting That's really out hard to say. Um, I mean, it ebbs and flows based on the month. Um, millions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, millions? Yes. Wow. Just for insurance yeah. agencies? Mm-hmm. Um, wow. That is wild. So, so tell me about the successes. Why do agents go to other places to get leads and um, then they come you know, here I, and they stay with I, you Jeff. i always like to describe it like this nobody wakes up in the morning and says like man i am just ready to buy some insurance leads today <laughs> you know like uh, i think people would much rather get a referral or or something else through their pipeline but but sometimes it's just not enough let's you got people working uh, do you want them sitting around or do you want them calling people who could be interested in insurance you know pretty pretty easy decision right there um so why do people stay with us? Well, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people can find systems that, that really make them successful. So that would be far and away the number one. Uh, but number two is just in today's 
uh, world, people are going to the internet first to find insurance. So if you're not trying to capture that market, you're losing out on a big portion of it. Um, you know, we all know the big online brokers here. And uh, and in some aspects, they're eating a lot of people's lunch, but um, everybody who's kind of adapted to the new way that people shop is probably finding a lot of success there. Yeah, yeah. Because it used to be just the... Um, the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the price shoppers that were out there, but now it's not, I think, I think sometimes we have to uh, get rid of, oh, there was a pop-up box and I filled out my information and sent it in. The, it, it, there's, that's still out there, but like some of the stuff I imagine, and I don't know this for a fact, but like lending tree is doing is you're getting the lead because your mm -hmm. customer is already in the process. That's different than somebody being out there and it pops up on the side of their page. Hey, would you like to get an insurance qu quote? And they put the information in there. So I think loyal listeners, we understand there's a difference between these leads. There's a difference between being out there on an island by yourself and being just part of the process of another company at Lending Tree. We all do a lot of homeowners, loyal listeners, and when you do it, how many times does your broker call you and say, hey, this, or your referral partner call and say, hey, this person's insurance is too high and it's going to mess up their debt to income ratio. Is there any way you can at least just try to get them? So there, that's a lead where you became a, mm -hmm. a partner because of their process. I think that's differently. Completely differently. Right. Am I am I wrong or right and, by saying that? Um, you can actually that's see it for my yourself. It's really this. easy because it's online. If you go through Lending Tree's mortgage funnel, uh, so their form for uh, requesting mortgage rates, it'll say, "Would you also like an insurance quote?" How many times do people click yes rather than no? I'm asking that, you yeah. some figures you may not know right off the top of your yeah, head, but I don't I'm just know curious that. for myself I probably on that. Should, you know, so it's something that I'll that I'll dig for, but. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting, right? Because I would want to know, because I, I always think to myself, I get all these free offers and I'm like, no, no, no. And I'm thinking, man, yeah, there's probably yeah. a shitload um, of people Again, it's yes all about this, getting your you know? financial house in order. And that's like the company vision from the very top is just like, we want to be the one-stop shop where somebody needs a credit card, somebody needs insurance, somebody needs a mortgage, somebody needs a personal loan. We do small business loans. There's a there's a company in uh, South Carolina that handles that for us. So, um, just our our hands are in all the cookie jars. So, Jeff, whenever you um, are getting lead, what are the ways that agents can work in getting mm -hmm. leads with you guys? Do you guys have call transfers? Do they buy a bunch of leads? Do they have filters? Give us, <laughs> give us your not your boring ass demo. Give us your agency. Yeah, yeah. Our so agents. I think, uh, good, like you said, live demo. transfers are actually one of the most exciting products, and a lot of people find uh, a lot of success with it. Recently, we just added a new really kick ass thing where um, if you go to Google and you and you type in something like compare insurance quotes and you're on your mobile phone for you, Android, for me, iPhone, um, you know, it'll, it'll have a little thing where you can just click a phone <laughs> number and dial it in. And that goes straight to uh, our guys in Sacramento who will then transfer you to a, to a qualified agent. So uh, we're using every tool that we have available. So click to call at this point. I mean, that is somebody who, who Googled something and then clicked on something and called somebody and stayed on the line. I, I really don't know, other than somebody walking into your front door, mm -hmm. I don't know how much more high intent you can be with that. Um, we offer filters. Uh, we do all the PNC lines, well, um, auto home and renters. Um, and we also do health, Medicare supplement, and uh, Medicare Advantage leads. So about the only thing we don't do is life, um, which is something that we're working on. But, um, but most of the major lines that, uh, that people write, we can offer something for it. Wow, that's fantastic. So so as an agent, I go and I say, hey, I want to do business with you. How am mm -hmm. I? Um, can I get filters on mine? Do you just stack me? Do I get secondhand leads? Is a, What else is there besides call yeah, transfer? Yeah. Um, what is a call transfer? So Tell I'll me all I'll start with that. the call transfers. So call transfers are, um, it's either somebody who filled out our form that our call center is able to get on the phone 
and transfer to you. So they already said they're interested in insurance. We call them up. Uh, they say, yes, I'd like to talk to an agent right now. Uh, you can filter those. So you can do it by tickets, accidents. Um, age is a big one. Obviously, you know, everybody over 25 is going to get a better rate. Um, I've noticed that with uh, independent brokers, usually a little less strict on the filters. So that's good. That means that more people can flow in on that funnel there. Um, with, yeah. Um, and then with that's leads, uh, you know, same deal. So if somebody goes through one of our funnels and fills out the form, uh, you can filter it by any of the data points we gather. That's tickets, accidents, uh, age. Um, you know, there, there's other factors in there too, if you want to get into the weeds, but those are, those are typically the, the most popular ones. Another popular one would be like, do they own their home? Um, you know, getting somebody who owns their home and has and wants an auto insurance hmm. policy is a pretty slam dunk there. So, um, yeah, they're all real time, a uh, maximum of four agents at once. So, um, you know, it, it's. So do they, whenever they, you say real time, do I, I get an account with you and that, uh, my, my, my salesperson in my office is sitting there and then gets an email or yeah. uh, it gets a call. Does it pin? You get an email and then a lot of people will choose process? to use a CRM too. So we integrate with most major CRMs out there. Um, so that the process is a little more seamless. Um, but if you want to do it all through email, that's completely fine. Uh, you just get a ping with their information there. Boom. You're ready to go. Um, I would suggest if you're going to go the lead route, you probably should invest in a CRM as well. Uh, we find that people who invest more in a in a process are going to be way more successful, probably triple, quadruple their close rates uh, overall with that. So. So mm -hmm. I have Salesforce. Let's talk about what that looks like. So I have Salesforce and uh, as a CRM and I, uh, uh, boom, lead comes in and it comes into mm -hmm. my Salesforce and I have leads in my Salesforce. Is that what happens? Yeah, it, it would load in there and, and then and tells and us depending or? on your process. We also use Salesforce. Um, you know, uh, you'd have to convert the lead in our case, but, um, I don't know how you work. Um, and, and then right. call them. I mean, that's right. How does my how does my person find out? Does it ding them or it's, it's however you however have them set have up? The so it, it varies. Up. You know, we, there's there's over two dozen CRMs mm -hmm. that we integrate with, and every single one of them is different. Uh, my client services team very highly adept yeah. at, at walking you through those, even though uh, they've never used it before in their life. It's just they've talked to so yeah. many agents that that we have cheat sheets for about every CRM now to be like, right. I've never used this program before in my life, but I know that this is called a lead alert, and here's where you go to find it. So, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. All right. That's interesting because yeah, this is, I've always said we we're not mm -hmm. we're not a um an, an agency that gets leads um that buys them. Uh, it is something that we're looking at for our for our personal because we we market so hard in commercial. We want to grow our personal, but mm -hmm. it's something that we really don't really like spending a lot of money on. But yet because we get a good influx, but. I, 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 you know, we spend enough money in the community and other things, and we've thought about maybe getting the leads to, to jazz, to, to really jazz it up. Do we have higher closing ratios on the call in, or on the tra call transfers? I would say yes, but the volume's the a lot you know lower. So, that? so it's always like a little balancing scale. Like, okay, I could get a hundred leads for X amount of dollars, or for the same amount, get you know three call transfers well if you bat 100 percent on those call transfers that's three policies but you could bat higher than that on some leads too um it's it's mainly just like you have to have somebody on the phone and by the way right. you have to answer your phone i think that's a challenge for some people is like uh their appetite's a little bigger than what than what they can actually digest and you don't want to miss a call transfer because that's somebody who um came to us expecting an insurance quote and and we want to deliver that for them so So if mm -hmm. I say I want three call transfers an hour, you could you can, set it I up could, to do that. that to um, where... uh, you know, call transfers are, it, it really depends on your area. And, um, you know, you're in Illinois, right? I don't know if you're licensed in multiple states. Maybe if you expanded to multiple mm -hmm. states, you could, you could think of something like that. But, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't expect three in one hour unless you're, you know, yeah. Okay. So that's my question is on, uh, see, uh, what I'm trying to do, Jeff, is get inside the head of an agent because they're mm -hmm. thinking the same exact thing that I am right now is that, so my person just sits there all day and just waits for the phone to ring. 
for eight hours or that, that's what I'm trying a, to figure it out on this call transfers. Is, um, it, it depends on your staffing level. So this is actually the, the issue with call transfers is if you're not staffed properly, um, it, it's going to be a wild okay. ride for you. So I would say the people who are successful with it, um, they're going to have somebody, um, an office manager who probably fields the call immediately. Because if you have an office manager, that's probably part of their job is to field each and every call that comes through. So boom, that office manager picks up the phone okay, this is a quote wizard live transfer. Who's a, who's a producer that, that can take this right now? Transfer it over there. That's not a reality for gotcha. every agency. So that's okay. why like, right. when you talk to somebody who works for us, no. we're going to try to uh, do our best to steer you in the right direction because a mom and pop shop uh, might not be as successful with that product. Um, or we just need to optimize the account so that three calls in an hour could never come through. Like maybe you just want two a day and that's something that you could handle and you link it to your cell phone and you're pretty good about answering your phone. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. There you go, Jeff. You made that a lot clearer there. I mean, every agency is different. Mm -hmm. We all know that, but it's nice getting that overview um, that you just gave there. So thank you very much for that. Also, um, Oh, there was one other question I was going to ask. Um, what would you say, roundabout, an average yeah, agent uh, spends monthly on leads? I know some probably spend five thousand. I know some probably spend two hundred bucks. But what if you were a guesser out there? This I mean, I know that. Your brain. I know What's it for a fact. So our say, average Jeff? agent who signed up uh, last month has spent about five hundred and fifty dollars with us. So. And that's just in the past month, like they, they oh, really? that's okay. like a monthly right. spend. So I'd say that's a sweet spot of like 500 bucks. You're, you're getting enough that fills your pipeline. It's probably not overwhelming. Just like you said, there are people who are like, well, I have six producers and I spend way more than that. And then there are people who spend $200 a month. Um, depends on the size of the agency. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. That's good to know, Jeff. Jeff, right, wrapping this up, anything else about leads or quote wizard? Um, you or know, I don't want to get too salesy to on it. I think that it's a value add um, for the right agency here. Um, I, what I want to uh, portray to your listeners is just, uh, I love helping out salespeople. And I think that uh, the insurance agent is, is uh, you have a lot of tools available to you. And we just love being another one of those because I think there is a huge value in talking to a live person about insurance instead of just going through some sort of online thing. I love it, man. I love it. Love it a bunch there. Made some notes and everything. And Jeff, I appreciate your time, dude. Uh, loyal listeners, I I know I've, you've... Uh, Thank you for being a loyal listener, and I know that you got something out of this. I asked Jeff some questions. I think enough questions that have scratched the surface that you now know, yeah, maybe I should get a demo and go look further into this. Uh, that's what my goal here is, Jeff, and thanks for answering the questions to give them a little bit behind the scenes um, and, uh, you know, push them, push them over the edge to try and, and to try and get some more business because that's what it is, <laughs> putting premium on the books, baby. That's thank what it much. is all about. One. Jeff, thank you for your time, bud. Hey, and this has been Jason Cass, Agents Influence. Tell me your thoughts and tell me your ideas, and I'm going to tell the world what you have to say. This has been Cass. He's Hogue. Quote Wizard, we're out.